So I wanted to cover all the skills that we've gone over with Mr. Gus. So you've got one spot that you can go to to review everything. So this first exercise that we're going to go over is relax on a mat. And what we're looking for from Mr. Gus that he goes into a nice relaxed body posture. As you see here, he's laying down, his hips are cocked out to the side. And the way that we get him to do this right now is that the blanket is the indicator that we're doing this exercise. So you can use any towel, any blanket. And this is where we want Gus to calm down and relax when he gets overly excited or anxious. So this is the most important thing that we go over because if he runs into anything in the future that gets him stressed out or anxious, then this is gonna be your tool. And so I've used this even for loose leash walking so far with Mr. Gus, where we got out front and did some relax on a mat prior to going on our walks so that he could get used to the area, the smell, the sights, and everything around. Um, you can feel free to take Gus to a park, for instance, bring your mat, do relax on a mat, and then all the different stimulus that's going on around him is going to be perceived as less of a um, threat or of less concern, and the body language is going to be helping him work through this. So that nice relaxed body language is what's gonna be sending a signal to his brain that everything's A-OK, -okay, we're fine. Um, and so the way that you can uh, work with this is um, <clears throat> working from distant, uh, different distances and different uh, levels of distraction. So if he had too difficult of a time with a specific stimulus, let's say bicycles at the park, I would move further away and uh, if he was still having a difficult time, then I would change the environment and let's say do it in your front yard where um, bicycles are driving by. So the 2D distance and distraction are the two variables that you can start to work with. So you can always get further away if it's too stressful or um, make the environment less stressful. So, uh, you know, an environment like this, a living room where there's limited noises and smells and activity going on is an ideal environment when we're learning relax on a mat and you can always up the ante and make it more challenging over time. So we're going to take a treat, toss it on the mat, toss off the mat over here. Come on, bud. I'm going to scoop up the mat here. We're going to go over our name game exercises. With our name game exercises, I just want some good eye contact. And with the clicker, I'm going to pinpoint the moment that he has done what I'm looking for. So I'm going to say, Gus, take the treats, drag them up towards my face. And this is called luring. As soon as we get him to make eye contact from luring, then I'm going to try it without luring. I'm going to say, Gus, he's going to look at me uh, without dragging the treats up towards my face. So that's a little bit more challenging, uh, but we definitely want that. That's actually an exercise that I strongly encourage you to uh, utilize throughout the day when he's getting used to um, being back at home, just constant name games, get him to focus in. So he's walking around, I say, Gus, get him to focus in, bam. And um, then he can have some treats. And as far as treating goes, I'll treat him uh, for the training period that he's here. When he gets home, train him for a couple of weeks with the treats, and then start to scale back and treat every other time to phase out the treats and then start to chain the other skills, phase it out further, um, and just be real systematic about it. I like to go every other time, and um, then he's getting it half of what he was before, and then after that, every, thir every third time, and then you can make it just really variable and random <clears throat> at that point. Next, we're gonna go over another name game exercise. So I'm gonna take a treat, toss it on the ground over here. Yes. Good. He's got to focus in on me, even though he was uh, interested in that treat on the ground. Then I like to work in some recall. I'm going to toss the treat over here. Gus, come. Good. Very good. Um, with your recall, one thing you can do is uh, start to, to hide. So I've got the, the wall over here, so I can give him a treat over here. Gus, come. And swoop over behind the, the wall over here, give some treats here. Gus, come. And I'm start to track you down. So going off of an auditory response is really, really beneficial. Gus, come. Sit. Good. Next is um, our sit down stay. Gus, down. <laughs> 
very good. Yes, stay. Three. Good boy, very good. So with our stay, um, same thing as with our relax on the mat, we'll make it more challenging, distance and uh, distractions, just further and further away. Um, and you can also do it in different environments as well as for longer periods of time. Uh, so he's doing a, an excellent job on that. And that's an excellent skill for impulse control. A stay is great to let your dog know, uh, I have to listen. So it's actually one thing that we've been stressing with Mr. Gus has actually been giving him a sit and a stay before we go through doorways in the kitchen, uh, as well as going outside. And as soon as he gets too focused on where he wants to go, then he blocks out everything else around him. And so it's been uh, pretty challenging actually. And so at times um, I'll eat it, take a treat and drag it over his head and lure him into a sit, uh, which is really uh, pretty foundational. But if I have to make it as easy as possible um, to get him to do it in these you know, more uh, difficult circumstances, uh, I'll do that, that's fine, anything to get it. But I do wanna have that impulse control and so I'm having them give me sits and stays before going through doorways, and I encourage you to continue to do that at home as well. Um, that was such a big guy. We really want to make sure that, you know, before I'm heading out on walks, before I'm, I'm uh, going anywhere, that I really want to stop and then get the, uh, the A-OK -okay from my owner, that then it's OK for me to continue on my journey. So um, very pivotal. Yes, touch. With this one, um, I wanted to bump uh, my nose or his nose into my hand, and uh, this one is a great one for getting in positioned on our uh, loose leash walk. We'll go over that and I'll show you what our loose leash walk can look like um, and how we can help position. And I also like to utilize this for um, recall if a dog comes up. I found that some dogs uh, will get you know three, four feet away. They're not exactly all the way up. I'm going to put my hand down and then tell them to touch. And they know exactly where they need to be positioned. Um, next, we're going to go over a lead it. Yes, lead it. Very good. So you'll notice there, he gives me like a real good retraction. Uh, really pulls back. That's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, another rendition of a lead it uh, that can be fun is I like to take some treats, put them down on the ground. Yes, lead it. Oh. And um, right now we're at the stage to where we make a little teepee over our treats and I'm covering them and uh, then he has to wait and then I tell him three when he can go after it. Um, it's far more challenging once I get to the point that I can just drop kibble on the ground, tell him leave it. Um, but right now we're in an in intermediary stage and I'm really proud of his progress. He's done an excellent job. Uh, next I want to go over his space command. So this is our anti-jumping command. Anytime that he's too close. Um, I want to be able to tell him space, and he should stop about two feet shy, give me a little bubble. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Space. Good. Very good. Very good. 